Scary Truths About Retiring to South Carolina. Today, I'm going to share with you why South Carolina may not be a good place for you to retire. Huh? What? Is this even the right script? <laughs> No, seriously. Today, I'm going to share with you how expensive South Carolina has gotten to live in. Now, there are many things to consider when thinking about retiring to South Carolina, like medical care, groceries, home ownership insurance, utilities, property taxes, and the cost of homes. And I'm going to explore each of these topics in this video. Okay, even though this video is about some of the not so good things about retiring in South Carolina, I do have some good news for you. You can now live listen to my latest episodes on your favorite podcast platforms. And at the end of this video, I'm going to share with you one amazing reason why you are better off retiring in South Carolina than in Florida. Now, please give me a thumbs up if you find value in this video. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and ring that bell so you won't miss any of my future videos. Oh, and one last thing. I'd like to give you all a gift today. I'd like to give you a free copy of my book, Southern Comfort. Just click the link on the screen or in the description below and the video will be instantly downloaded to you. So first, let's take a look at medical care for seniors. Over the last few years in South Carolina, there has been some no notable increases in medical care costs affecting seniors. For example, in 2021, the employee contribution to the total premium cost for an employer-sponsored health insurance plan was $4,113, with the deductible amounting to about $3,500. This represents a significant portion of expenses for seniors. Additionally, South Carolina has seen a higher rate of individuals with medical debt and those who went with without care due to the cost compared to national averages. Now, these figures highlight the growing financial burden of medical care on the senior population in South Carolina. And in South Carolina, the costs related to Medicare for seniors have also seen changes. For example, in 2021, doctor office visit spending per Medicare beneficiary was $1,072, while home health spending per Medicare beneficiary was $491. In patient spending per Medicare beneficiary was $2,269 and primary care spending beneficiary for those aged 65 and older was $881. Now these figures provide insight into the specific costs incurred by seniors under Medicare in South Carolina. Okay, let's take a look at food in South Carolina. Food prices have experienced notable increases over the past few years. In 2020, food at home prices increased by 3.5% with significant rises in meat categories. And in 2021, this trend continued with food at home prices rising another 3.5% and food away from home prices increasing 4.5%. The most significant increase occurred in 2022 during the pandemic with overall food prices going up by 9.9%, driven by steep rises in food at home prices by 11.4%. Now these trends reflect broader pressures and changing market dynamics affecting food prices across all categories. So in English, that means they haven't really come down since the pandemic and inflation has kicked in. Now, homeowners and car insurance. The average price for homeowners insurance premiums in South Carolina has experienced a significant increase recently. From 2021 to 2023, they have jumped as much as 22%, which is one of the largest increases in the nation. Now, this sharp rise reflects various factors, including higher costs due to inflation, labor, construction expenses, and the impact of natural disasters. It's important to note that these increases can vary by location and individual circumstances. And speaking of insurance costs in 2023, car insurance rates in the U.S., including South Carolina, which saw a significant increase of approximately 24%. Now, this rise was attributed to factors such as higher repair costs, 
which was due in large part to the supply chain issues, more frequent accidents, and the impact of natural disasters. The trend indicates that car insurance premiums are likely to continue to increase with a projected rise of about 7% in 2024. The increase in car insurance rates is part of a broader trend, aka inflation. Now, this part's not about the high cost of insurance, but it's something that you should be aware of when buying a house or insuring your car because it could affect the cost of your insurances. It is called a clue report or comprehensive loss underwriting exchange, which is part of Nexus Lexus. It collects and reports for up to seven years of auto and personal property that would be home ownership claims. It also provides insurance risk scores to help inform pricing and underwriting decisions for the insurance industry. So if a house you are buying has had multiple insurance claims against it from its previous owner, it could drive up the cost of your insurance, which I get. Actually, it seems to be a bit unfair that it was the previous owner's claims that drove up the price. But don't worry about that too much. This report also stays on their personal records and follows them for seven years as well. So it's always a good practice to ask your insurance company if they can tell you if there's been many claims on the property. Next up, utilities. Over the past few years, utility costs in South Carolina have seen a noticeable change. Currently, residents of South Carolina spend about $200 per month on electric on average. Now, that total is about $2,400 per year. This amount is 6% higher than the national average electric bill of $2,265. The average electric rates in South Carolina are about $0.14 cents per kilowatt hour, indicating that the average electrical customer in South Carolina uses around 1,392 kilowatts of electricity per month. Let's take a look at a tale of two cities when it comes to utilities. We have Greenville, South Carolina, and Hilton Head, South Carolina. In Greenville, the cost of utilities is slightly below the national average, with a cost index of 96.9 compared to 103.9 for the entire state of South Carolina. The average monthly utility bill for a 915 square foot home is approximately $126, covering power, heating, cooling, water, and garbage. Additionally, the average monthly cost for internet service is around $60. Electricity in Greenville costs an average of 11.14 cents per kilowatt hour, which is lower than the state average. Now, residents spend about $180 per month on electricity, totaling around $2,160 annually, which is 5% lower than the national average. On the other hand, Hilton Head Island has a cost of living that is 8% higher than the national average. The housing expenses in Hilton Head are 23% higher than the national average and utility prices are 1% higher. The average monthly cost for basic services, that is electricity, heating, cooling, water, and garbage for a 915 square foot home is around $133.17. The average monthly energy bill is $178.59. So with Without overstating the obvious, your utility cost will vary by the area that you live in. Next up, property taxes. The median property tax in South Carolina is $689 per year for a home worth about $137,500. Now, counties in South Carolina collect, on average, 0.5% of a property's assessed fair market value as the property tax per year. The exact property tax levy depends on the county the property is located in. So some examples, Beaufort County collects the highest property tax in South Carolina, levying an average of $1,319 or 0.45% of the median home value. Now in Chesterfield County, they have the lowest property taxes in the state, collecting an average tax of $293 or 0.38% of the median home value per year. If you'd like to know what you could expect in the county that you're thinking about living in, I've put a link to tax rates org in the description below. Now, here is another tax that people seem to forget about when calculating their home ownership cost of living. These are your homeowner association or HOA or condo fees. Now, HOA fees can vary significantly depending on the location and the amenities offered by the community, but I can tell you firsthand that they've increased throughout the state. Now, I sell properties in many communities that have HOA fees, and it's something 
that really didn't come up into consideration for most buyers back in the day. But now it's one of the first questions that is asked. And just as a side note here, if you're taking out a mortgage on a home, the mortgage company uses that HOA figure as part of your monthly mortgage premium. And I have seen people not qualify for a mortgage because the HOA fee threw their debt ratio off whack. Now, take my community for example. In the last three years, we have seen our HOA fee go from $500 annually to $675 annually, which is a 35% increase. And that, my friends, is about 10 times the rate of inflation in 2023. Now, on to housing. One of my favorite topics, but I will keep it simple and direct. There has been a significant rise in property values in South Carolina over the last five years by about 51.8% to be exact. Now, this is an average and in, in some location, this number is higher and in some places it's lower. But overall, this indicates a strong housing market driven by high demand and limited supply. And if you would like to see my real estate market for South Carolina 2024 video, then click this link right up here. Okay, this growth trend has likely been influenced by factors such as the state's growing population, attractive lifestyle offerings, and economic conditions. The high demand for housing Housing, coupled with a limited number of available homes has created a very competitive market environment, pushing property prices upwards. Prospective buyers and retirees looking to settle in South Carolina should consider all of these market dynamics as they have considerable implications for real estate investment and affordability. Now, remember, in the beginning of this video, I wanted to share one amazing reason why you are better off retiring in South Carolina than in Florida. Well, here it is. When I looked at the homeowner's insurance in South Carolina and saw that there was a 22% jump from 2021 to 2023, I got curious. So I looked at the increase of homeowner insurance in Florida and found that their cost had jumped for the same time period a whopping 100%. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you would like to learn more about retiring in the great state of South Carolina, then you'll want to watch this video next.